Uh, okay, so back to the sort of main story here. Um, so we we're talking about access control, chapter eight. Uh, we covered kind of all the basic stuff, you know, uh, access control list, uh, capabilities, you know, multi-level security, covert channels, all, all that stuff. Okay, now uh, a firewall. Now why would a firewall be considered a form of access control? Well, if you think about it, it fits in pretty well. Um, so the idea is we've got the, you know, evil internet out here where all kinds of bad stuff happens. We've got our nice, friendly internal network here where all kinds of bad stuff also happens, but we feel a little more comfortable there. Um, we've got the firewall in between to pr protect us from the stuff on the outside, to, you know, maybe stuff from getting out that shouldn't get out as well. So the, act, so the firewall's job is to determine, you know, what to let in and what to let out. So it's a form of access control for the network. It decides what gets in and what gets out. Okay, there's a lot of analogies people use for firewalls. You know, some people say it's the soccer goalie who's trying to block the shots, right? Um, but I'll say it's like your secretary in your uh, office. So if you want to meet with somebody, some important person, you don't immediately go and talk to them. Usually you contact the secretary, and then the secretary decides whether you're you know, important enough or, you know, to, to meet with this particular person. Now, there could be different, you know, levels of importance, right? If you want to meet with the chair of the computer science department here, you go and tell the secretaries, and, you know, you probably have a pretty good chance of meeting with the chair of the department. If you want to meet with the president of the United States, okay, a whole different level of filtering takes place, right? Your chances go down dramatically, just like the firewall. Okay, it depends on the security, right? You may be very strict in some cases and not so strict in others. Um, okay, now... Um, I actually just had a guest speaker this morning in the uh, morning class, the 9 o'clock class. Uh, this guy uh, was a San Jose State graduate probably 20 years ago. A really interesting talk, though. He works for a company that makes uh, firewalls, and he's done a lot of other stuff uh, over time. So I'm hoping I can get him, or maybe his brother, who also works in similar stuff, to come here um, and talk. Uh, and, and it would be good because it fits in very well with what we're talking about here. Um, anyway, so there's not really any standard terminology, and I think that's kind of uh, almost on purpose. You go out and look at the marketing sort of literature, and it's just very confusing. It's kind of hard to tell what they're doing. But um, really, a firewall, there's sort of three choices when you build a firewall, okay? It's kind of where, the real question is, where does the filtering occur? Okay, do you do this at the network layer, do you do it at the transport layer, or do you do it at the application layer? And there's implications to, you know, speed, efficiency, and how much security you can get, depending on which layer you want to work at. Now, there are various combinations of these that you could do as well, but, you know, for sort of as a first pass, this is a good way to, uh, to uh, specify things. Uh, okay, so if, it, if their firewall works at the network layer, we'll call that a packet filter. If it's sort of conceptually working at the transport layer, we'll call that a stateful packet filter. If it's at the application layer, we'll call that an application proxy. Okay, All right. uh, okay so remember, network layer down here. Okay. Now, packet filter filters based on information that's available at the network layer. Now, what sort of information could you see at the network layer? that would be useful to decide whether this packet can come in or not. Sender and receiver. Sender and receiver, right? IP address and IP address, and maybe socket as well, okay, maybe port number as well. So you could certainly look at the source and destination IP, uh, and you could look at, uh, uh, how about this, yeah, source and destination IP, source and destination port, how about this, flag bits, SYN, ACK, can we look at those? Uh, technically, no, okay, right, because technically these are part of the transport layer, okay? So we'll cheat a little bit and we'll say that we can look at those because the point is we're not really using anything crucial to the transport layer. We're not using any of the, uh, you'll see in the next slide. Okay, so we'll cheat a little bit and say that we can look at that, whether it's a SAN or an ACK or whatever. Okay, but, okay, so if you're doing this, if you're doing, working at the network layer, a packet filter, what's the advantage? What's good about this? Very simple. 
It's very simple. Simple is always good. Simple means fast, low overhead, not much processing. Okay, that's great. What's the downside? Can't see very far into the data. <laughs> okay, so you're not really seeing into the data at all, right? I mean, you're just looking at the headers, right, to decide whether you can let this thing in or not. So you don't see the data. So somebody could be sending a virus, right, and you let it through. Uh, so they could be sending malware. They could be sending Word documents, which are worse than a virus. Right? So, you know, they could be sending all kinds of bad stuff. Um, also, you don't even have a, a view here as to, you don't, you're not looking at that sort of connection kind of stuff. So you don't have a view whether this is part of an ongoing connection or not. That's stuff that happens at the transport layer. So you don't really get a view of that either. So speed is good. Okay, disadvantages. No, it's sort of stateless in a sense. Uh, you don't see TCP connections. You don't know whether, you know, you're not really looking at that kind of stuff. <coughs> and you definitely don't see the application data. Okay, so you don't see any of that. Okay, so here's the kind of thing you see with a packet filter. You get a set, a bunch of, you know, preferences uh, based on, you know, source and, desti source and destination IP address, you know, and ports and stuff like that. Okay, that's the kind of stuff you can see and you can filter it quickly. So suppose, oh, okay, okay, and they use the term access control list here, which is a little different than when we used it before, but um, suppose you have, uh, you, spe you specify this access control list. So what is this, what is this trying to say here? In words, what are we trying to do here with these restrictions? Well, okay, we're going to allow something that's coming from the inside, going to the outside. We don't really care about the IP addresses. As long as it's going to port 80, <coughs> then we'll let it go. When it's coming back, we don't really care as long as it's coming from port 80. Other than that, we don't like anything. <laughs> okay, what are we saying here? Just move browsing. We're trying to allow people to browse the web and not do anything else. Okay, that's really what this is. Okay. All right. Uh, and ACK bit. Okay, so we're, you know, we're cheating a little bit, looking at the ACK bit. So it's, what, what should that tell us? If they're acknowledging something, <coughs> what, what does that mean? It means it's probably part of an established connection, right? That's what ACK bit's supposed to mean. They're acknowledging something that's already been sent. So it's not an initial packet that's coming back. It's part of a connection. Okay, so that's good. So, okay. Uh, okay, so the purpose here is to restrict to uh, web browsing. Okay, now, uh, okay, if, excuse me, so if an attacker wants to probe your network, okay, the very first thing they want to know, okay, let's back up. So you have a firewall, okay, what's the first thing you do with your firewall? Well, there's a whole bunch of ports there for certain services and certain stuff that you don't, you don't even run, right? So there's no reason for anybody ever to get access through those ports. So what do you do? Close them down. Close those ports. Any packet bound for any of those ports it just immediately gets dropped. It doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so that's good. Makes it more secure. There's less paths through your firewall. Okay, so an attacker. What's the first thing the attacker wants to know? which ports are open, right? Because they don't want to waste their time going through dead ports, right? Trying Because they're not going to get anywhere. So they want to probe to see which ports are open through the firewall. That's the first sort of first step in any, any attack. Okay, so here's a way that maybe we can tell what uh, ports are open through the firewall. So the attacker is going to send packets. It's going to make up these bogus packets and set the act bit. And the act bit is supposed to mean it's acknowledging something. It's part of an ongoing <coughs> connection. That's what it's supposed to look like. It's not really because it's the first packet. He's just firing it off, but he's setting that act up. So when it shows up, the packet filter is going to look at that. And it's going to say, hey, this looks like it's part of an ongoing connection. And do what with it? If it'll allow it through in some cases, in others it won't. When will it allow it through? If the port's open, it'll allow it through. If the port's closed, it'll just drop it. Okay, so if it gets through, what happens when it gets to the guy on the inside? What does he do with it? 
He says, hey, this is not part of an ongoing connection. And what do you do when it's not part of an ongoing connection? It's a bogus packet. What do you do? You send a reset. You say, hey, kill that connection. It's no good. So if you're the attacker, what do you do? You try a bunch of different ports, set the act bit, fire off the packet. If you get nothing back, what do you conclude? Yeah, that port's closed. If you get a reset back, what do you conclude? Yeah. That port's open. <laughs> so it's just about that simple. So the idea is like this. So here's Trudy out here. She knows these IP addresses. She creates packets and fires them off, just generally going through a long list of ports, right? She tries 12, 1207, it's filtered by the firewalls, gets nothing back. 1208, it's filtered. 1209, suppose it gets through, right? And then the packet gets here, the guy says, hey, wait, I got a, a packet with the act bit set. You're supposed to start off with a synchronization request. You're not following the protocol. So I'll send a reset to tell you. And that reset comes back to Trudy, and she knows that port is open through the firewall. Okay? okay, nothing too tricky there, right? But, uh, certainly would work, uh, should work against a packet filter firewall. Okay, now the next step up is the stateful packet filter. So we'll keep track of state, okay? So we'll keep track of TCP connections is really what we're thinking here. Okay? So we're kind of working at that level. 